This is the day I didn't really want to come. This is my reptile room, the reptile room that you guys have come to love. Well, we're gonna turn this reptile room into this reptile room, and this is how we do it. Well, why are we doing this? Well, let's take a little tour around. First off, you've got this piece here, which is the part that you guys see on camera all the time, and it, it doesn't look bad, does it? It doesn't. Well, let me show you. So, there we go, reptile room. Doesn't look too bad. We are gonna be adding some flooring onto this enclosure just to make it look that little bit nicer. But to me, it's starting to get cluttered. One, we've got all these jar enclosures. We've got the tropical factory, tropical tube, just dumped there. We've got all the reptile systems lighting, just dumped there. The mealworm farm, just dumped there. I mean, that's on a wooden rack system, that one just there. And there's nothing actually in that rack system. We've got loads of bits and spares and parts and polystyrene and enclosures and more. That underneath that towel there's products that we've got to do some videos on for reptile systems we've got substrate we've got more substrate we've got some bits and bobs we've got to give away we've got wood we've got our whole plant rack which is just there which we don't even get light to because we've got the polystyrene there and then just look at the i mean obviously studio lighting more plants that we're growing that one just there's food for diego and it's just becoming really unmanageable and I'm really really struggling to keep it tidy if you ever noticed when I'm actually sat at the table and we're well, basically you see this shot just here I'm sat on a toolbox so yeah I just want to try and make this a nicer place to be we've got that full unit just there we've got the stuff at the top and we've got a full unit there of just stuff that's the new tarantula build that looks absolutely amazing we've got a shelving unit there we've got the rack there so what are we going to do the rack is going I don't know what I'm going to do with the dubia colony, but the rack itself is going. The animals out of there are getting moved. So the big leopard gecko, the male leopard gecko, Mac, down there, he's going into there. The millipede, that'll be going into there for now. However, we are making a big bioactive millipede setup. So that'll be empty. That can go. This shelving unit can probably go. This, whoosh, all this is probably going to go over in that corner just there. Now, I don't know whether to go along that wall and then the table can move forward to here i don't know we've just got loads and loads of bits and bobs to do um but we've got to build a big shelving unit to go there that big shelving unit is going to house all of our exoterras plus more exoterras that we've got or not so much exoterras that we've got but exoterras that we are getting and glass tanks that we are getting and that um rack is basically going to fill from these enclosures all the way over to the door. It's gonna be a huge, huge rack system. We're gonna have loads of space on there, and that's for future projects, because we have got a lot of future projects. Mainly some with Cheshire Reptile Rescues, that link is in the description down below. We might add something going on with them. We've gotta pull all those enclosures away from the wall, so that this comes level with the actual front of the rack, which will be about there. So they've gotta come forward, but for them to come forward, we've actually gotta move them across slightly, which means that's gotta move across slightly, which means all of that stuff over there, that's gotta come out, that's gotta go. The mealworm found, that probably will still live on the rack system. We're gonna have the plants on that wall just there. You can see, look, there's me to-do list up there, just a to-do list for today. The table itself is gonna move forward a bit so we can fit it behind there. That's gonna get a lot more natural light and so on and so on and so on. We've just got so, so much to do. First job, we've got to clean out that leopard gecko enclosure. Ready for that leopard gecko to go in. Mac, we all know Mac, my male leopard gecko. He's coming out of that stupid plastic tub and he's going into this three foot enclosure. That's one bin bag full. The styrofoam, you know, all that styrofoam, that's got to go in storage. I have a feeling this is going to be one of those days where it's going to look a lot worse before it actually starts looking better. This exoterra is being quickly thrown together for a temporary setup. The millipedes just come out of the rack system now. It's going in here for now. We are eventually planning a nice big bioactive full fish tank setup for that dude. Second bin bag full. Now we've got to unwire all the heat cable and all of the heat mats and stuff from this wooden rack that we did make, and that's going to get down the tip. Oh, 
Ah, oh, it's so nice to be able to open that door all the way now. That rack's not there. That's some, well, well, until the new rack goes in in a day or two when it comes out even further, and then that door won't open as. Much. There is some logic. There is some logic. God, this feels like it's taking forever. So what we've got so far, we've managed to clear off all the stuff off the top there. That's the mealworm farm, all the lighting stuff. That wooden rack, that's the next thing to go. I think I've got about four or five tip loads of car stuff to go. I didn't realise I had that much junk. Have you ever done this sort of stuff? And realised, oh crap, I've actually got quite a lot of junk. Uh, we've got an empty, that shelving unit, that's uh, douche. That one just there, just full of junk and stuff like that. We've got a few boxes of like lamps and... Uh, infrared heat projectors and stuff they've all got to come out but the rest of it's all just like stuff for helping me do the DIY stuff we've got a rack over there which we've got to sort through that's just got all the water bowls all the hides the spare stuff we've got the plants they've got to still move then we can move this whole rack unit now this is a very heavy unit so I'm gonna to have to empty the entire unit move that all the way over there get that one situated so that I can start potentially building the rack there but then again I've still got to move those enclosures out and I've still got to move those enclosures across which means I'm going to have to move the more oh. <laughs> checking in again that's all cleared up in that corner so that's ready for that unit just there I've just got to empty it got the bookcase and everything that's all sorted the racking systems and all the mealworm fab they're all out <sighs> this is hard work harder than I thought but check out the frogs let's see there's one and there's the other one they're the new baby green tree frog. Oh, that's right. I've not actually shown them or introduced them just yet to this channel. If you watched the live stream I done a few days ago or yesterday, then you you would have seen them because I did do like a little drop in them. But yeah, white tree frogs. They came from um, Cheshire Reptile Rescue. They're a rescue company that goes out and rescues animals from all over the country. Whether it's an animal that just can't be looked after anymore, circumstances have changed for the owner, whether it's an animal that's been found in a park or an ill animal or whatever, Cheshire Reptile Rescue will come and collect that animal and um, rehabilitate it and pass it on to forever homes, just like we have here. We also take in um, wild stowaways. So those little lizards that come in from South Asia in like shipping containers, you know, like Mushu. Well, we've got one in there as well, Wish. It's a Chinese house gecko, that one. So Reptile Rescue, uh, Cheshire Reptile Rescue, the link's in the description down below. Go and check them out. Go and drop them a follow on their Facebook page. They've always got some unique stuff coming in. But now it's time to get that table and all the storage underneath it and basically move it away from the wall. It's got to come away from the wall to about uh, here maybe, which means it's going to be coming further down there. But that's where the plants are going to go. They're going to go in that wall there. We're going to get some awesome Reptile Systems uh, Plant Grow LED lights up there to come down here just to help with the lights. And it's just going to... It's going to be absolutely amazing but one day that's just a, a project startup so to speak because i'm thinking hydrophonic system <laughs> remember i said behind the table was actually storage <laughs> cleaning time check out <laughs> yeah He's having a good old climb around in his enclosure. Now, as I say, this is just a temporary enclosure until uh, we get sorted. Now, the tricky part, I've got to get down in that corner, move that Reptiprise over a little bit, move all of those enclosures, including that one with this really big weight. I've got to move it over 20 centimetres. That's um, uh, that big. That makes it look really big because it's close, but I mean, 20 centimetres. 20 centimetres. Wish me luck. That's rock solid. How am I supposed to do that? Now why have I just done that? Just to gain that much little room just there. Just that 20 centimeters there. Well, quite frankly, I've got to pull these enclosures forward as well. Now that's because the rack system that we've got that's gonna go there sticks out that little bit further so on camera that just won't be as far forward it'll be hidden behind the rack so if i could bring that forward plus it gives me room for thermostats and electric and all that sort of stuff behind the enclosures and i'll be able to get my gangly little arms behind the enclosures if there is a problem that's why now I've moved the recti breeze back all the way to that enclosure just there that gives us enough space there to be able to put that rack unit just there and now we're going to move these forward but to be able to move them forward, I'm gonna to have to get down that side because I can no longer get down that side. So I'm gonna to have to do that now. 
Okay, problem. Big, big problem. Right, you know how the enclosures, they're all sort of like the same colour, aren't they? They're the same colour as the wall. And they're the same colour as the wall. But this big unit was right next to them. Um, <laughs> I only painted halfway because I couldn't get that out. <laughs> and now there's a big rack going next to it and I don't know it. Oh, we've got a friend. Hello, mate. Shall we call you Bob? Bob's your uncle. Or is he your nan or your granddad? Hello. Oh, yes. Hello. But that's not a project for today. I'm going to save that for another day. Right now, I've got to get this over here and probably put on an angle so that I can fit a chair here. Can you imagine if I had a giant beanbag chair? Right, you're about to watch me get squashed against the wall. Um, and watch how weak I actually am. And that's my fault. That'll have to do. I'll put it against the wall as opposed to on an angle. I can still get in the drawers. It doesn't look the best, but it's for storage purposes only. But check out this. So, the mess. Voila! It's getting there, slowly. I mean, the table's filled up, the floor's filled up, the floor's filled up, the wall's filled, yeah. Why don't you do the job that you originally started before all this? I've got to move these enclosures out, but I'll put a load of stuff on the floor off that, so I can fill that up and then I'll move them out. Pull these enclosures forward now. So, background noise, windows open. It's hot. Perfect place for a chair. You know, a chair where I can just sort of sit and do some editing, watch all the animals and just... Let's try. Ugh. I think the next thing is just to solely get that big rack built. It's 150 centimetres wide, 180 centimetres tall and 60 centimetres deep. So we're going to be able to store a hell of a lot on there when um for, well for, yeah for future projects i mean we've got that to go on there we've got other stuff to go on there we're, that's going to go on there all these guys are going to go on there loads of stuff's going to go on there plus a load of rescues plus a load of bits and pieces so it's definitely worth doing but i definitely need to uh sort the plants out they're looking a little worse for wear well i guess it's time to um crack on with building the rack system now there's going to be a fair few curse words and stuff so um i probably won't film it <laughs> To be fair, that didn't actually take as long as I thought. Boof, there it is. Now, it's not gonna be like this color forever because we are gonna do some nice rock worky sorts of coving on the outside, but that's not just yet anyway. I was right about the enclosures. It only sticks out by a little bit. So that's not the end of the world. That's actually really good. But let's go all the way over here to the other side of the table. Whoosh. Check that, obviously the mess is just mess. But that, let's, let's go and check it out some, somewhere else. Look, look, check it out. I've got a chair. Basically, there you go, that's it. Imagine how many exoterras I can actually fit on that. Because I've got that one just there. I've got all the exoterras around there. I've just got loads and loads and loads to add on to there. Let's check it out on a wide angle. Boof. Now imagine me just sat here, just, oh. I've even got the uh, Repti Breeze just there when that's all done up. It's gonna be beautiful. So let me quickly explain what's going where. Right, so you can see it's all oddly shaped and stuff like that. That bottom one is solely for storage. We've got these plastic tubs, they can slide underneath it quite happily. Then we've got all the stuff like water bowls, hides, cocoa bricks. That bottom one is solely storage. Next one up, that one, that's the perfect height right now. Now I've just adjusted all the shelves for 60 tall exoterras, ones like that plus all the heat and stuff that goes on top of it. So I can stick a heat lamp on the top and it's still got enough space there. That one directly up there, that one, that's the perfect height now for these 30 tall exoterras. We're picking up one from a good friend, Mike Webster later. He's the one that found Mushu uh, in the shipping container. Yeah, that's all gonna go there, the, four, the 30 tall exoterras. We've got a wide one coming and it's all gonna go sort of there. We're gonna stick some proper lighting underneath. And on the top, the 45 exoterras, the 45 tall. So we've got that one just there, which is a 45, 45, 45. We've also got a 30 wide, 45 tall exoterra. So they're all gonna go up there, again, with enough room on the top for lighting. Yes, before you say anything, my painting is really, really bad. So, so far, 
So we're on the next day now. As you can see, we've got the morning geckos down there. They've come away from up here. We've got a whole row of 30 centimeter tools just there. This one came from TM Reptiles down in Widnes. Go check them out on Instagram. Um, I'll leave a link for them down in the comments down below. Up the top, we've got the 45 tools. So that's the brand new one we've got. That's a 45-45. That's the one where the millipede's in now. Check this out. One of the babies, look, baby morning gecko just sat there on top of the uh, water hose. And what do you think of the reptile room? There we go. I almost, I literally almost dropped my tablet. Can you see the clear hose all the way up there? Oh. Can you see the baby morning gecko? Yeah. Oh. Looks cool, isn't it? And while we were messing around, there was one in here as well. I saw one of the eggs hatch and uh, I can't really show you, but I'll show you another day. So all we've got to do now is find a place for the dubia colony just there and then we can fit two more of these 45, 45, 60 tall exoterras next to each other. We've got that rack completely full. We've got still a little bit of space up here. That also came from TM Reptiles. Again, linked in the description. This one, I'll put, do you know these cheap little clicky lights where you click it and, ooh, I'll put one of them over the top and look at how fantastic that looks. Oof, there he is. Look how nice that is. So we've got the big elephant pet. Oh, that's just amazing. I mean, check it out from over here. This is the sort of spot that you guys would see it at. How cool does that look? Boo, boo, boo. Yeah, we've, next to it, we've also got the Ferguson poster. That's just there. That's the one where it tells you what animals are on which Ferguson zone. That was given to me by Reptile Systems. We've actually got a few more actually down there which we can give away at some point. So that just helps out. I mean, like, that massively helped me out for my new uh, white tree frogs. Because little did you know, they actually come on Ferguson Zone 3 and they need a UVI of 1.1 to 3. Nearly the same, well, put it this way, your white tree frogs are exactly the same um, UVI rating as a Royal Python. I mean, you've got an African species there, an Australian species there. You've got gargoyle geckos, Asian water monitors, boa constrictors, California king snakes. They all come on Ferguson Zone 2. How amazing is that? I didn't know that to start with. So now I've got to try and figure out how to get my wide tree frogs in an enclosure that's going to be able to support a basking spot and UV light. And they're only small, so how am I supposed to fit them in somewhere where they're actually going to get some food? That's a new one. We've got some plants to sort of go on the sides of the enclosures. A few of them are growing over there. We've got a few more over there. We've just got loads of plants. Make it a bit more nice and sort of plants dribbling down. Oh! So thanks for tuning in, guys. If you've enjoyed the video, hit the thumbs up button. If you're new around here, make sure you do hit that subscribe button. Massive shout out to TM Reptiles for helping me out with some of the exoterras that are up there. And uh, peace out, guys.